हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डील विद द रैंकाइंस अर्थ प्रेशर थ्योरी वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द एजम्स ऑफ दिस थ्योरी एंड द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस थ्योरी इन टर्म्स ऑफ द वैल्यू ऑफ के ए एंड के पी फॉर द कोहेशन लेस सॉइल सो टू स्टार्ट विद द टॉपिक इज रैंकाइंस अर्थ प्रेशर थ्योरी रैंकाइंस अर्थ प्रेशर थ्योरी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द एजम्स ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर थ्योरी द एजम्स आर लाइक दैट द फर्स्ट एजम्शन फॉर द रैंकाइंस अर्थ प्रेशर थ्योरी इज अ वेरी सिंपल एंड दैट इज वेरी कॉमन फॉर द अदर थ्योरीज ऑल्सो एंड द फर्स्ट एजम्शन इज दैट सॉइल इज होमोजीनियस एंड आइसोट्रॉपिक we have already studied about this particular assumption in the previous theories also homogeneous means that the property of the soil at every point is the same the property of soil do not vary with the location or with the space isotropic means that the property of soil will not vary with the direction that means in all the directions the property of the soil will be equal the second assumption is that the soil is cohesionless cohesionless means we already know that for that particular soil c will be zero and the example of cohesionless soil will be the sandy soil that means we can say that the rankine's theory of earth pressure will be applicable only for the sandy soil the third assumption for this particular theory is that the backfill surface the backfill surface near the retaining structure is a plane that can be either horizontal or inclined that means if this is your retaining wall and this one is your backfill then it can be either inclined or it can be either horizontal but the surface should be plain it should not be curved like this so such particular backfill is not allowed according to this particular theory it should be plain it can be either inclined or it can be either horizontal the fourth assumption is that the face of a retaining wall the face of a retaining wall in contact with the backfill that means the wall which is in contact with the backfill should be considered as smooth is smooth what is the meaning of this particular assumption is that if this is the face of the wall which is in contact with the backfill and here the soil is filled then this face should be smooth smooth means the value of friction should be equals to zero the friction force will be zero on this particular face the fifth assumption for this theory is that the face of wall in contact with the backfill in contact with the backfill is is vertical only that means such particular wall is allowed with this vertical face but if the wall have such a inclined face then such particular cases are not considered by the rankine theory so this is considered but this one is not considered according to the rankine's theory sixth assumption for this particular theory is that the wall yields about its base and such that such that the maximum values of c and phi maximum values of c and phi are mobilized that means if we are going to study about the failure of the wall then we have to calculate the failure at its base that means this particular wall can be failed either by the sliding then we will study that the wall will slide about its base 
it can also fail by overturning then we will study we will observe that the wall will ob will overturn about this particular point only so this was the assumption whereas it is also written that the maximum values of c and phi are mobilized that means at failure the values mobilized of the c and phi are equals to the ultimate values of c and phi we have already studied about this particular mobilized values in the chapter of shear strength i hope you understood this particular concept that if there is a c and phi given in the question we will assume that that maximum values of c and phi will get mobilized that means we need not to calculate the values of mobilized coefficient of friction the maximum values will be in action and hence there is no need to reduce the values of c and phi to calculate the failure conditions the another most important assumption for this theory is that elemental failure is considered what is elemental failure elemental failure means that whenever you are going to study about the soil you are going to study with the element of that soil what is that the application of this particular Rankine's earth pressure theory is very simple and now I am taking with the application of this theory especially for the first case I am taking the active state of soil so the first case is with the active state we already know that we are going to study with the elemental failure so I am taking an element of the given soil and this element will be subjected to a force in the or stress in the horizontal direction as sigma h dash whereas a stress in the vertical direction as sigma v dash as the soil is in active state we can say that the sigma v dash will be major whereas sigma h dash will be minor as we studied in the shear strength chapter a relation between sigma 1 and sigma 3 was sigma 1 is equals to sigma 3 10 square theta plus 2c 10 theta we can directly put the value of sigma 1 as sigma v dash sigma 3 as sigma h dash 10 square theta is nothing but that is pi by 4 plus phi by 2 plus c is zero as the soil was considered as cohesionless cohesionless means c is zero that means second term will be zero only we are here to calculate the value of coefficient of active earth pressure and that was defined like this that means we can say that ka will be equals to sigma h dash upon sigma v dash and this particular by solving this particular equation we can say that sigma h dash upon sigma v dash will be equals to 1 by sigma h dash upon sigma v dash can be written as it will be equals to 1 by tan square theta that is pi by 4 plus 5 by 2 and in the derivation of this particular equation we already studied that this tan square theta is nothing but that is a 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi that means we can say that sigma h dash upon sigma v dash will be equals to 1 minus sin phi upon 1 plus sin phi for this particular cohesionless soil and this ratio is nothing but this is your ka that is the coefficient of active earth pressure I hope you all understood the derivation of this value of Ka and you all must have read this particular formula if you have studied geotechnical or soil mechanics in your college also. You all know that this particular formula will be very useful in our numericals and you have to remember this particular formula. The derivation for this formula was very simple and that was according to the Rankine's theory. Now we are moving towards the second case that is the passive state. In the passive state we can again say that this vertical stress will be your minor principal stress whereas horizontal stress will be major. 
again writing with this equation that is sigma 1 is equals to sigma 3 10 square theta plus 2 c 10 theta we can say that sigma 1 will be equals to sigma h dash where sigma 3 will be sigma v dash 10 square theta theta is nothing but that is pi by 4 plus 5 by 2 plus 0 as the value of c will be 0 for the cohesionless soil again we can say that the ratio of the sigma h dash and sigma v dash will be again the coefficient of lateral earth pressure in the passive state so kp will be equals to 10 square pi by 4 plus 5 by 2 that can be written as inverse that is 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi so this is the formula for the value of kp that is the coefficient of passive earth pressure we have already studied about the value of coefficient of earth pressure at rest and that was k naught equals to 1 minus sin phi from these three formulas of the k naught kp and ka we can easily arrange these three in the increasing or decreasing order we can see here that in the formula of ka there is one minus sin phi upon one plus sin phi that means this particular ratio will be less than one as the numerator is smaller than the denominator whereas kp will always be more than one as the numerator is bigger than the denominator hence we can see that the value of kp will be more but among the k naught and ka you can see here that k naught is nothing but that is 1 minus sin phi upon 1 whereas it is equals to 1 minus sin phi upon a value which will be greater than 1 that means this ratio will be smaller as compared to this that means ka will be the smallest and k naught will be in between ka and kp from these two formulas of ka and kp you can see that kp is nothing but that is the inverse of k that means you can again say that ka is equals to inverse of kp that means ka into kp is equals to 1. This is again a formula to be remembered but with an exception that this formula is applicable only for the backfill which is horizontal. If the backfill is inclined by an angle beta then this product will not be equals to 1 but that is equals to cos square beta. We will study that inclined backfill in our next videos but to remember this particular formula you have to also know about the exception also. So we will study about the exception in the further videos but for now you can remember that this product will be equals to 1 for horizontal backfill. Fine. I hope you all understood about these derivations for the active and for the passive state. You are also understood about the assumptions of the Rankine's earth pressure theory. In the next videos, we are going to study about the different or various cases that we will study with respect to the earth pressure. We have already studied about the various cases in the effective stresses and the similar cases will be taken in the earth pressure also in the next videos. Till then, lagatar padhte rahe, badhte rahe, happy engineering.